Hi, welcome again to Clickcast, guys. Uh, Paul Cunningham here with uh, Stephen Thornton and uh, Gladys Yelland. And we're actually here with another photographer. Uh, this photographer is a street photographer and also does video, um, does animation. Uh, he just likes the, like, he has a nice balance between his work and he enjoys both uh, his genres he does as well. So this is going to be something different from what we usually do. It's not just a photographer, it's someone who enjoys doing video as well. Uh, so the, the person we're going to speak to tonight is Callum Main. Uh, Callum, hiya, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm good. Looking forward to it. Great. Thanks for coming along, first of all. Um, so what we're going to do, firstly, we always ask, of course, is tell me more about yourself, where you're from, um, how did your journey start in photography? Um, so, I mean, my journey in photography started not that long ago, actually. It was off the back of coming out of lockdown and COVID. Um, yeah. So, you know, going previously before that, in undergrad in animation, master's in animation, um, I work physically, so with stop motion puppets and sets, so I'm always working with cameras and DSLRs to capture the images. Um, but yeah, I, I, off the back of lockdown like probably most people i just want to get out of the house and out of little confined spaces and um it all started from just wanting to get better with a camera really better at framing better at composing shots yeah. um and it, it started as almost like a visual sketchbook that i could maybe dip into but i was always thinking about making little animations or short films wasn't thinking yeah. about photography um and then it just grew and I started trying to compose shots and tell stories in single frames. And um, yeah, for the last couple of years, I've just been trying to get better and improve. Yeah. And I have noticed as well, I've been watching some of your, your catalogue of your videos, et cetera, on, on Insta, et cetera. And, well, the, actually your website, it was on your website, I looked at your videos and the amount of concentration and detail, um, you know, you put into it is really interesting. Okay, see, there's a picture of you actually just, um, you know, close up and just fixing your, you know, the characters you're using and you're kind of moving about. Uh, There's a lovely picture of that. And that just captures uh, your uh, attention to detail, I think. You know, it's different because in photography, we, you know, we we're, we do photography, we, we take our pictures and we post-process them and that's it. But with uh, having a kind of videography, um, which probably I do as well, but not to scale you do in regards to your talent, uh, the art aspect, is what you do is really good and i'm sure is, do you do a lot of work regards to you know other businesses or promotion work or anything um well at the moment i'm actually finishing up a phd so oh, right. um, okay cool, cool. I'm, I'm doing a phd within animation looking at education and industry um yeah. so the, the set behind me at the moment that's the the phd film i'm working on yeah. um so a lot of things are on hold that's right cool. now that i'm trying to like, like finish and get that done and out of the way yeah um, i'm just looking my eyes are looking down but because i'm looking at the screen i'm not looking at the camera yeah. i'm just looking at the background there i can see a little seat in the back there that looks yeah there's a little, little seat in one of the rooms a little little character um just yeah against the wall. it's only against the wall yeah, yeah that's really so, good um yeah at the moment things are just you know focused on getting the phd done and actually yeah again photography started as like a, a light relief getting out from books and reading and 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 but still keeping my eye on something and what started as a real technical process i was i started to enjoy the challenge of trying to tell tell a story um, and yeah. in a single image rather than thinking about movement or, or or things like that but i think there's so much connection between what i'm doing behind me and and, and then when i go out onto the streets there's a lot of overlap and, and transition and skills yeah yeah certainly it's uh and how you're lining up your compositions as well when you're going out is that is that the same way you're probably doing your art regards to your your animation um i mean where did the uh, desire to photograph people come from i i think it's just the stories that i like to tell i i've got a sketchbook of ideas which hopefully i'll make some of them and there'll probably be some that are never made but i'm interested in just like people would say the mundane just interesting little everyday stories and there was a challenge for me to try and capture those with people moving and within sort of their own city environments or, or wherever it is. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm fortunate to work with a lot of puppets that don't move, so I can take my time <laughs> framing the shots. Whereas <laughs> when I'm out on the streets, I, I, I enjoy the the challenge to see a shot and frame it and then 
try and get the right character or the right person. Bye, bye. He can, he cannot last past them. Sorry? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, um, so just going back there. Uh, sorry, Galadzo, I know you're walking home there. <laughs> I thought you were getting attacked here for one one second there. I don't know what was going on. So, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the yeah, you, you're talking about you're in the street. You also, you, you've got the challenge of uh, people moving about. You mentioned, of course, about the, the static positions, of course, of your animation and how you can position yeah. things, I presume. Uh, but with regards to, you know, mainly just um, what are you trying to reveal about the people in, in general? You know, in regards to what you, is it the personality? Is it the backdrop? Is it what's what's it you try to reveal? Um, I think there's a combination of two things really. Um, mm. the, the the first thing is there's a technical challenge. I like a lot of shadow and light. I like playing with shadow and light and trying to create interesting compositions with the shadow and um, you know, whether there's silhouettes in there or there's people coming out of the shadow. And that yeah. feels more a, t a real technical challenge to try and create interesting compositions. Um, but but really for me it's just it, it could be quite random. I don't know if there's a good answer for from me because it, it if I see a character yeah. and I'm like, there's funny. an interesting story there and it's just trying to capture that trying to capture what I see in that moment in a single frame. Um, yeah. Whether it's a, a piece of clothing that they're wearing or they've got some sort of longing look on their face that you know yeah. they're, they're going through something and it's like how do I capture that and and not um. Yeah, just yeah. That does answer the question because you're you're capturing the, the, the emotions, you're capturing the uh, the surroundings, environment as well. But um, it is there is that thing as well there where you know you're doing street photography, I presume. And I think lads will uh, probably say the same thing: is you you assess the situation. Um, you know, you're, if you're doing candid photography, for example, and you when you take that shot, uh, you know you've, you've obviously either waiting for the person to walk through the light. Or you're waiting just to get like a shot of a person just staring into the lines of the camera, and you're trying to capture that emotion, the soul of that person. Um, I've tried it, and I I was absolutely hopeless. At, uh, sorry, um, street photography, where I just went into landscape photography and started from there. Uh, but I really do appreciate looking at guys like Fung Ho and people like that. Um, they say they do a lot of light, black. Uh, so it walks people walking through the darkness and coming out to the light. And uh, as you're probably well aware of, um, Sean Tucker, people like that as well, who are on YouTube, um, very uh, experienced guys who, you know, they've got the experience of using light very well. And just like yourself, Callum, because um, look at your images, uh, which I will put up some now, which you control light very well. And that's what I like about your style of photography. You do have these different elements, uh, will it be candid uh, or uh, light control, etc. So yeah, I looked through the images last night you sent us, and uh, really impressed with these. We will be uh, putting these images up through the evening as we talk, and uh, yeah, just leave some comments below as well, and let us know what you think of these images. So yeah, um, Stephen, what you got yeah. any questions at all? Yeah, Callum, you're. I've noticed that, like in all your photos, you're you're over the UK, but. By the looks at your base, it doesn't matter where you stay, but what's your favourite city to actually take photos in? Where you feel the most comfortable? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, the the PhD is in Edinburgh, so I'm probably in Edinburgh most of the time, yeah. um, and it's probably where I feel most comfortable. I find a weird challenge being in Edinburgh because there's obviously a real tourist attraction to come to Edinburgh, and there's the the classic maybe expected shots that you know people take yeah. whether they're just here visiting and they, they've got the different landmarks that they want to try and take and I actually think that's a nice added challenge to try and either take those shots in a different way or mm. almost try and avoid those shots where it doesn't actually really matter what city I'm in it's just people or it's just some interesting compositions yeah um, but I say I'm, pre I'm pretty comfortable walking around the streets of Edinburgh I quite like it it's it's a really nice environment to take photos in. Um, and um, yeah, I, I think it's that challenge of not taking the expected shot in the, mm -hmm. the tourist parts. Cool. Oh. Glad to you any questions at all? 
Can we hear you? Okay. So hey, what, <laughs> what, what kind of photography do you find quite interesting in general when you're taking pictures? So Is what it was like, that? What kind of photos or what kind of aspects do you find interesting when you're taking photos? Do you mean mainly more lights or people or architecture? Um, so I think I've been through an interesting journey. And I think, I mean, I don't know if people, um, or you all here fall in that trap, but I think starting off this journey, it was just a almost a harmless photo on Instagram and then sort of started taking photos from there. And I felt, I feel like I've been through a strange transition where I got trapped in what does Instagram want me to take photos of? Um, and I think more recently I've started to step back from that and be like, no, what is it that I enjoy taking and what is it that I want to actually try and find my own creative voice, I guess. Well done. Um, so whether that's successful or not, it's for other people to decide, but I'm enjoying my photography a lot more now by removing that pressure of trying to, I don't know, take something that people are expecting. Um, yeah. And I guess that at the moment it I was really interested in light and shadow over the summer um, and it sort of that interest has now dwindled mainly because of the weather in Scotland but also because I feel like I like exhausted that part of trying to capture those shots right. okay. um, and I, I guess the next challenge for me is I've got a couple of ideas that I want to start playing around with making little zines and things so trying to think thematically over that and I think for me the first part is trying to get candid portraits and start telling stories about people oh, yeah. that are in and around around the city and push myself a little bit more to maybe try and engage and speak to them as well as just try and capture a photo and, and move on, actually enjoy the whole process and get to know them as well as take the photo. So I think the answer is people and <laughs> I want to just explore that a lot more. Good, good. Okay, that's good. Yeah, um, you know, in regards to, you know, if, uh, how does a shot reveal itself? You know, if you're actually, you know, walking, so let's say hypothetically you're in, Glasgow or Edinburgh and you're just kind of walking down, you know, Socky Hall Street or the High Street in Edinburgh. Uh, you know, there's lots of people on a Saturday, for example, or during the festival even when it's worse. And, you know, you, there's not that separation. There's a lot of, you know, it tends to be a bit kind of um, overwhelming. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, photograph, you, are you looking just for a, a simple shot, like a clean shot, or are you looking to get like more of um, capture the whole environment more or is it both um it's maybe a little bit both but i think i'm looking for a particular shot like a particular yeah. person or a couple of people who are in maybe some sort of conversation or um some sort of communication um or framed nicely with next to a building waiting on something those like those everyday moments of maybe someone waiting for someone to come out the shops and try and capture that in a in an interesting way um yeah. i normally like to shoot with my um 85 millimeter lens so I'm a little bit further away, but close yeah. enough that I can get quite yeah. a, an intimate shot. Um, and so it really, it's just a bit of an opportunist and trying to um, maybe spot a character first. And if they are waiting around, then to go in and try and frame it nicely. That's, that's yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, cause, because using a, like even a prime lens 85 mil, what you're saying there, uh, that does give you that separation. It gives you the you know the, the point where you can actually study and take a back seat of your, what you're looking at. Um, I mean, I, when I when I done you know street photography, I was using a fifty mil lens, uh, an fifty fifty as we call them, and I was getting not close, but that was kind of restrictive. And you're using your legs quite a lot. Do you feel like you're using your legs quite a lot instead of you know obviously because you're you've got a prime lens, you're using eighty five mil. You kind of just like going up and moving your legs a lot more, and not actually standing in one place all the time. Yeah, I think it's surprising. I don't. I think I need to improve my patience a lot. So yeah. I, I'll, I'll sort of, um, which for 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 being an animator, firstly, yeah. I should have more patience than I do. But when I'm on the street, I find myself getting frustrated sometimes with the shot, um, and then. I try and reposition and then I end up losing it. And then I kick myself for the rest of the day being like, I should have just taken that shot. So there's, there's a lot of books out there where all the shots I should have taken. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think, I think moving a lot, I, I, I think that I need to, from just my own reflection, when I was looking at photos to, to sort of before this conversation, I stay quite at the same level. And I think my next maybe development stage is, to go up and down as well, well as just side to side when I'm trying mm -hmm. to frame the shots. 
Um, yeah. So actually, this has all been a useful experience because I was looking at my things and really reflecting on what it is that I take photos of. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I definitely need to start going up and down more as well as just horizontal. Yeah, okay. And yeah, just um, can you describe uh, your method or a way of uh, approaching and capturing a, a shot? So when you're actually on the street and you've found your subject and you, you know, what's the, the, the things you do? Um, I try and set like exposures and the settings sort of like as early on in the day as possible. So I can not be, I try not to think technically when I'm like out on the streets and just taking a photo. And you, you mentioned Sean Tucker previously. Yeah. I watched actually a video of his talking about exposing for the light of the day nice and early on. Um, so I'm trying to be quite, um, sort of reactive more than anything. So the first few shots of the day, I try and take rubbish photos as well at the start. I find quite a lot mm-hmm. of pressure on the first photo. So I'll just fire out a couple of really bad photos and then discard them, but I feel warmed up. Yeah, um, that's a good point. Set, set the exposure and all the settings that I want and sort of um, sort of F-stops and things like that. And then, then it's just about thinking about who's out there, who's on the street, where... Where are we going? I'll maybe try and plan a route before I go out. So I'll go mm. here, maybe walk down the Royal Mile and turn right and go down further into the Cowgate or whatever it is. Yeah, um, yeah. And then, so then when I am walking about, I'm purely looking for either nice framing or for interesting characters that are walking by. And I can yeah. kind of trust that I'm set up as best I can for those for those yeah, moments. Yeah, And uh, one of the things... Like, you know, some people, some photographers have preconceived ideas what they, they're taking a picture of, and some photographers just go out and, you know, take what's in front of them. Do, do you actually have a, an idea of what you're looking for? You mentioned there slightly, you did, regards to the framing aspect, but is, do you have, like, a preconception of what you're looking to get? I'm, I maybe have a rough idea in my mind in terms of what I, I'm looking for that day, whether it's, like, an interest. If, if I've walked to the uni or something and I've seen an interesting little framing yeah. opportunity i'll maybe go back and revisit that and, and see if there's anything that comes of it um so i'll maybe go out with a really rough plan but it's quite reactionary so i'll i'll quickly deviate from that if i see something more interesting or if an opportunity comes up somewhere else so i try not to be too planned because i think then i might miss something that's happening away from yeah what there I'm is thinking. that yeah you're right and it's, it's it's one must be tough for a lot of you know street photographers in the case that there's so much going on all the time and you, 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 what you said about the point when you're actually doing your uh, animation you're so relaxed and well you're, you're more calmer because you've got like um you know a, a, a space to work on and but you're out in the street you're always thinking and uh, it must be a lot of thinking and a lot of preparation just to anticipate someone walking through a scene to capture that scene and also of course just to capture a good shot because you know i remember when i was doing it i i, I kind of I always get like using a fast shutter speed. Uh, so if I've seen a scene and there's a lot happening, uh, say for example, there's a group of people and they're having a, a sort of friendly ar- argument, but they look quite animated. I try to capture that. So I was using the shutter speed just to kind of maybe shoot off about seven, you know, at a time. And that, when you go back home, there is that feeling when you kind of feel, you get them on Lightroom, you put all your images up and you look at them and you go, Two images I've got for that. I don't see it as as a failure. I mean, I don't know about you, but do you feel that you can go for a whole day um, and it's easy to set yourself up for disappointment, of course? But do you ever feel that, that if you don't get any more than two or three images, that do you do you give yourself a hard time, or do you feel that's that's okay? Um, I think I used to. I think when and again, I think that maybe goes back to a little bit of the whole social media thing and where I was like posting my work and. I, I felt I started putting a lot of pressure on my shoulders to be like, I need a good image today. And if I don't mm. get a good image, then, you know, I won't be able to post. And if I can't post, then this will happen and, or, or whatever it was. And then, but I think now I'm a lot more relaxed. I think trying to get yeah. out of that, that headspace and really asking myself what it is I want to achieve with photography first and foremost. And yeah. then now I'm a bit more relaxed and it's, if I go out and I've got one good photo, great. If I go out and I don't get any good photos, I'll, I'll look at Lightroom and I'll learn from the photos that didn't work. And yeah. It's like myself. I know it's a different, completely different genre of photography. I do. Um, but I can get nothing. 
and then I'll just look at it as just a lesson learned. And it could be just for the the weller, it could be the light, it could be anything. Uh, we're never going to always get like a one picture or two pictures, and that's where people, I think, especially people that do vlogging like myself, um, there's a lot of vloggers out there who put a pressure on themselves to get a good couple of images in a video, and they won't post the video, where some do. And that's that's like in regards to what you said there, is not put pressure on yourself, just trying to, you know, just work it with your game, um, work in all aspects of your framing, etc. And, and you can see that in your work. I mean, your work is, you know, I love the uh, the, the color and the, the actual photography as well. Um, you can see your post-processing uh, talents as well, showing them for that. And I think it, there's more to photography than just taking a picture. Um, there's, there's mainly the post-processing aspect as well. Um, yeah, I mean, can you could describe a, well, can you say, for example, you know, how did you go about developing your own style? You know, there is kind of elements. You can see there's a style there sometimes. I am, I mean, I mean, I, I appreciate that because I don't know if I have a style yet and I don't know if that's how everyone feels when they're going through their journey. Yeah, they well, I think I'll, I'll rephrase that. What I mean is, um, you're, it's not, you mentioned because it's, it's, it's a little random street photography you do, which is good. Yeah. And it's no, there's no sort of like one thing you do, like uh, light and uh, darkness or anything. Um, or candied shots, it is a bit of a mixture of everything. What I mean by that is your style is your own style with regards to you You do your own stuff is, and you have different types of uh, street photography uh, amongst um, what you do already. Uh, so not many street photographers, sim most of them will actually keep to their same way as doing sort of candied shots. Yeah. Um, Some will just do light and darkness where yours is a little bit mixed up more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I think I think really, I mean, first and foremost, I think I take a lot of my inspiration from from films and setting okay. up like you know nice cinematography, and um, I think that's why a lot of my stuff recently has been in black and white more than um, using some post processing in color. Yeah, uh, simply, simply because the, the film I'm working in is going to be in black and white, and then the sort of the films that I've been watching for inspiration and, and enjoying have been black and white. So I feel like my style is is shifting and evolving depending on mm. almost what I'm doing in the, the studio okay. and then I'm trying to mirror that and, and build off that again maybe starting from a technical perspective so yeah um so yeah just kind of just talked about style uh we've touched on a few things about different aspects of street photography with Callum and I just wanted just to bring Glads and because the reason why I bring Glads in because Glads has got well she's I don't know if you've seen a lot of her work um Callum but she's very famous for a one picture, which I will put up here. Uh, you're nodding your head there yet, and I'm sure you're, you Is guys the, have talked the, the to her a couple of times. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, Glads, is there anything you like to talk to Callum about? I was just wondering, like, um, do you shoot an aperture or manual mode when you go out shooting? And what kind of f stops do you try? Different types of aperture modes, like different f stops as well. No. Uh, I, I normally shoot in manual um because i like the the challenge of shooting in manual um and then in terms of in terms of f stops with the with the shadows um i have normally sort of 5.6 sort of f stop and then but with the the sigma 85 millimeter i use it's got a really shallow depth of field so i like to try and get the 1.2 aperture on mm -hmm. and, and get a really nice bokeh and 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 depth there so um but again, going back to what I was saying, once once I'm out, I, I really try and set my sort of settings for the day, and then sort of stick to those parameters while I'm out for the hour or a couple of hours. So, um, once they're set, I try not think about it because I feel that gets in my way too much of what I'm trying to trying to shoot. And when you go out, um, how do you sort of do? You just do you do street portraits at all? Do you approach people and? As for their portraits, or is it just generally candy? It, so it's all been candid so far. I think that's generally the next step of where I'd like to to take things. I want to. Um, I mentioned a couple of ideas that I've got. Uh, I'm working on. Um, and and one of those is trying to talk to the people a little bit more. So when I do see something interesting or, or someone interesting, sorry, um, try and talk to them and get a little bit more about their story. Um, whether I share that story or not, I think's actually not important. But for me, I think it just the picture then becomes more important to me, I think, if I can get a sense of who that person is as well as just capture their their, their what portrait. what inspires you as well? Pardon? 
what inspires you? Um, I, I get. I mean, again, it's. I think there's some own ambition there of making films and short films. Um, so not, not maybe, um, sort of some like documentary style of what I'm doing, but just short films in general. Um, and that's what kicked off the whole inspiration and. And really, my inspiration stems from just the mundane and the everyday, because I think there's little stories and the really boring moments that are happening. Um, and trying to capture that interestingly and get even just get people to think, oh, I've done that before, or you know, I've stood in that place before, or even question where the shot is even taken. Um, I can't exactly remember the pictures, but I, I, there's been a couple of interactions where I've taken a shot at quite a well-known place um, in Edinburgh, and they've. I've been asked where that was. And I think that's quite a successful moment because mm-hmm. it becomes more about the person in the picture rather than the place that they're that they're in. Yeah. So which filmmakers inspire you the most? Because you know you say you like short films. Like for example, like today, I went to the gallery, street photography gallery in Glasgow, because I work in Glasgow. And um one of the photographers was telling me that in Transcate, when you go to street level photo gallery from the side there's an old theatre, and it's like one of the oldest theatres in Glasgow. And apparently it's where Laurel, you know, um, Stan Laurel, it's mm-hmm. where he acted in that particular theatre because apparently his parents were originally Glaswegians, which I, mean, I didn't know about, but I thought it was fascinating sort of thing. And um, so I remember as a child growing up loving Laurel and Hardy. It was just one of those things I absolutely adored. And it was probably one of the things that actually made me laugh but it also made me think that maybe I might go back to that place and take photos of the theatre because the fact that it's connected to Stan Laurel and the history of Glasgow so what I'm asking you is what inspires you film wise what particular filmmaker inspires you to give you that story it's like for me I like the old movies yeah no I'm um, so for me it's it's less about maybe where a film was shot it's more about just the, the, the cinematography from certain films. So I mentioned black and white before, but I've been watching a lot of Hungarian films recently and some of Bella Tarr's work, um, which there's some really challenging films in terms of like his work. There's one that's like seven and a half hours long, which I haven't quite completed yet, but there's a lot of shots, which is just, they've just hit play on the camera and let the film roll and just capturing the actors walking and and really nothing is happening, but everything's happening. And I think that that aspect of that feels so close to the street photography in terms of just opening the camera up and seeing um, what's happening. Um, so I think there's there's films like that that really catch my interest because so little happens, but so much happens. Um, and and then closer to like just the cinematography side, there's the classics like you know Blade Runner and the science fiction films like June, where it's just yeah. these it's still about people and humans and there's a real intimate element to them, but there's such a vast landscape and there's, there's the interesting lighting and shapes and and shadows. And so it's really just trying to play off all of that and find my own version of it, I guess. Yeah, I I get that. That's interesting. Yeah. Cause I have to admit that, yeah, sometimes I get inspired with certain films like Quarantino some of quarantine films I actually love. So, yeah, I, I can understand that. It gives it a bit more of a feel, doesn't it? Yeah, 100%. And I think and I think there's an interesting challenge to try and almost piece together a storyline through a series of images. And I, I, I guess that's, you know, when you're pulling together maybe an exhibition or or, or, a, or, a, or a series of, of images, that's what you're doing. But I think of it more as like story beats of how do these all fit together? And, um, you know, could you make a film out of it eventually? You know, is that the, the first step of then going into something that's moving? Or are they do just you, their own do you like that? Do, do they have to be in sequence or can they be out of sequence? You they, know, for example, when you look at some of quarantine, like Pulp Fiction is a classic where it's not in sequence and you have to figure out what's mm-hmm. actually going on. And that's quite intriguing. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, um, I I don't know if you've seen the film. Um, I'm thinking of Ending Things by Charlie Kaufman. Um, yeah. There is a lot of like back and forth, um, and you know, cutting and 
changing of narration and, and whose perspective it's from. And so it absolutely doesn't have to be a linear sequence. Um, but if there's a thread in the photos you know, when you're out on the street, if I can find a thread that, you know, even if it's just I'm out for an hour, if there's just something that happens in the first picture, I like the challenge of trying to thread out the same idea in the in the rest of the, the day while I'm out. And then I guess it's successful. Yeah, but do you think if you ever did an exhibition, would it be more 3D than 2D? Um I don't I don't necessarily think so. No, I think if I was to do an exhibition, it would be 2D and I would try and use the the images in in, in an interesting way, maybe framing them or positioning them in a an interesting mm -hmm. manner. But I think I'd definitely stick to the, the 2D image. See, for me, I've been fascinated because I'm a developer and actually using a projectile with showing the photos in a certain way and actually programming it in such a way that it throws in some kind of simulation sort of format with music because it makes it a little bit more, I suppose, intensify. And like some for what I find interesting was going to Banksy's exhibition was very fascinating because the way he laid out everything was very 3D, but he'd laid it more in a visual way, like there was a bus stop, there was a truck, there was his desk and his room. He laid it out in that way, which I thought was fascinating because you don't usually see that in exhibitions. Yeah, absolutely. I didn't get to see the Banksy's exhibitions. I'm very jealous that, that you did because um, everyone said it was really amazing. Um, it was amazing. Yeah. Um, I, th I, think, I think for me, I think it's a case of, if I was to do a street photography exhibition, I really would want to stick to like the images. I feel like some of that like behind the scenes is is important, but I don't know if it fits I don't know if it fits sort of the street photography style. Mm. If I was gonna do an exhibition with my, you know, with some animation work, obviously you've got the set and it already starts to lend itself to playing with how you disseminate that in a in a show. Um but I I'd like the challenge of trying to position the frames in an interesting way and, and try and lead the um the audience through it and get a narrative from all the still imagery. Yeah. Okay. The reason why I ask that is because you say that in filming interests you. So it's just that's why I asked if you'd go for a more conventional way or you'd go more in the film side, I suppose. Okay. That's interesting. Thanks. That's uh, good questions from uh, Glad's there. And Stephen, for my voice breaks up in there and I lose it. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. Um, I would just like to ask Callum. Callum, where does your, because we've spoken about your photography and I, I know it is click cast and it's about photography, but I'm really interested in your animation. What started your animation journey? Like how far does it go to back to your I mean, animation for me was Michael Benteen's Potty Time, which was, you know, a wee, it's the grey hair. But that's what started for me in the fascination. I've never had the brains or the knowledge to go into it, but then you've got, like, morph, uh, things like that growing up. What was your journey for animation and why? Um, I think the, the, the quick answer is it was a bit of a happy accident. Um, I've grown up with animations and films and and was and I and I, yeah love I grew up with like the sort of the Spider-Man animated show in the 90s and the X-Men which I loved and sat in front of all the time um but I genuinely didn't see it as a, a career path or a, a, a journey that I could go down um and it was when I was going through applications to university I there's a little bit of a, a sporting background. I took some years out and then came back into the, the creative field. Um, and I was looking at illustration, if, if I'm honest. And then there was this overlap between animation and, and film for an undergrad opportunity. And, and, I, and I went for it and was fortunate enough to to get onto the course. And since since then, I've just been been at animation and, and making little films um so it was, it was really quite a roundabout happy accident way it was something i grew up on and, and loved and i've always loved cinema um but i just didn't see it as an opportunity until um i got the chance at undergrad and then i've not looked back well you're going to be a doctor soon hopefully i'll keep my yeah, fingers crossed. yeah fingers crossed yeah <laughs> so is there another genre in photography that interests you, you know, um yeah, I've got a couple of things I'd really like to try. Um, landscape photography, I really want to try just to see if I can achieve some of the, the way that um, landscape photographers capture a scene. I think there's a 
a real different element to framing and, and the patience and the you know trying to work with the elements to get the right shot I think is an interesting challenge um so I, I I'd love to just try that and and see yeah what, what I can get from it um but I think from that I'd really like to start working with more people and collaborating a little bit more maybe doing some more deliberate portraits and and working in a in a creative studio environment that way I think that it would be a having the patience and the time to be able to do that rather than the reactionary stuff on, on the streets would be um, something I'd really like to to try maybe after the PhD is done and there's more space for that. Um, but outside of people, I think landscape is definitely something I want to to give a go at. I mean, I don't know, I don't know about you, but I, I know that when I'm out taking photographs, say, insects for macro, I talk more to people than I actually date or get shot sometimes. You know, I was I was out the day with my with my big nature I had taking photos of birds and that, and I probably took seven eight hundred photos. When I go out with macro, I'll take in between twenty and seventy five because I'm I'm thinking more. Yeah. But it's yeah. also because I'm talking to dog walkers and people. I just love. I like getting people's stories, like hit like yourself. You hit snow. When me and Paul used to go up and do street photography, I'd be talking to the homeless guy for 20 to 25 minutes to see what the actual story was before, you know, I actually said, oh, there's a pound, pal. Yeah, I think I think when I'm out, I, I really, I think that's the strange thing. I feel quite isolated sometimes when I go out. I try and avoid actually speaking because I I'm, I'm feel, feel like I'm too focused on trying to get the shot. And I think yeah. that's where I, the that's the line I need to cross so I can start getting in more of the story and and maybe understanding the, the sort of subjects a little bit more that I, I get to capture. Yeah. The other day I was on the street I ran into a face it was good to see We talked a couple hours and we missed all of the taxis As we realized what time it was We both let out a sigh as we've always done As we turned to leave we knew this wouldn't be the last one No mm. Because that's how it flows When you're with the ones you love the most And even when it's time to go We know what we know Say goodbye, cause we never wonder why. If we'll be seeing each other. Some good uh, questions there for both these guys, thanks. And um, what we're going to do now is just going to um, change it slightly the format. Um, we've asked quite a lot of uh, questions to Callum, I'm sure he wants a little break. <laughs> um, so, Callum, uh, what we're going to do is we, we're going to go over our subject. And we'll get everyone's thought from this one subject and uh, see, you know, if obviously if we agree or disagree with each other. So I'm just going to begin the subject. And it's just one of the things that um, film photography and, of course, uh, digital photography. OK, so I'm just going to bring these two things up. And, you know, film photography is a growing trend again. And in, as you probably know, notice, especially in the street, of course, it's um, a lot of people enjoy taking that kind of nostalgia, kind of nice grainy kind of uh, looky images. Um, guys, what do you think? In it? And, and just, just putting this out there. And have you had, um, you know, for example, another hobby in photography and, for example, using another camera, would you invest in... Um, a full frame, well, not a full frame, but more than like just, um, yeah, well, yeah, we'll go for that. We'll say a full frame film camera. Would you invest in that? And if you would invest in that, uh, would you be the one doing all the, the developing of course, uh, using all the chemicals and, or would you actually get someone to do it for you for the time aspect? And, and then if you were using a film camera, what type of pictures would you take? That's the one I might look for because film, film, people use film cameras tend to take certain images with it. They don't do it for every genre they do. For example, macro or things like that. You never see many people who have used a film camera with a macro. I'm sure Stevie's jumping at the bit right now to tell me they are. But uh, yeah, I'll start off uh, with Glads. Um, Glads, what do you think? Do you think you'd buy a film camera? And if you did, what type of images would you mainly take? Um, when I did my photography course, one of the top courses I did, I went out with the Pentrix 
Mm -hmm. Film yeah, yeah. camera, second hand one. And I found it fascinating because I was more careful with what photos I took mm. because I hadn't got much film and I didn't yeah. want to wait for film. So instead of just going out shooting like randomly, I was a lot more choosy was what I took. Mm. And if I did have film, yes, I would love to learn how to develop my own photos because I think you can make them more arty if you develop them yourself than just relying on someone else to do it for you. So yeah. that's if I went that way. Yeah. I have thought about it. Okay. Yeah. And I think one of the things with um, modern, you know, post-processing, back in the day it was darkroom where, you know, you use the light to control obviously with... Um, what it's called a dark room and now we've got light room as a digital it's you know is this a you know this shows you what um you know the type of kind of developing is still waiting on to a digital aspect we're using a, a digital uh, tool which is controlling the light just like we've done with a dark room and the, the thing with that was glad says is obviously controlling the light etc there's that thing you can put a little art of, of art into it and the whole process of actually hanging them up, etc., to dry it, there's something about that. Um, everyone loves nostalgia, of course. Um, Callum, yourself, would you uh, go into uh, film photography? And if you did, uh, what type of images would you go for? And would you actually use a setup as well? Or would you get someone to process them for you? I think if I was, first of all, I think if I was going to, I'd definitely have to learn how to do the whole process myself. I think it's just part of the nature of, I like to try and, not have control of everything in the process, but just an understanding of it all first. So whether eventually down the line I'd give it off to someone else, I think I'd need to start by doing it myself just to understand actually yeah. how, how to do it. Um, I, I've, not, yeah. I, I've not really thought about it, to be honest. Um, I, I really do like the um, the images that people get with film photography. And um, again, you talk about nostalgia, I think, you know, when you when they sort of take pictures of their street that they live on or they start looking at their house and it it, it really does serve those types of memory and, and themes quite well. Um I think the challenge would be really exciting on the street trying to get candid portraits with limited film, limited, you know, limited number of shots. Yeah. And um so I think that the challenge would be great, but it's it's not something that I've really thought about um exploring. Yeah. But okay. During this conversation, now I'm thinking, you no, know, maybe I should be going to, to explore that. Yeah, sure. And of course, uh, one of the things if um, photographers can learn a lot using film, because a spool, when you have a spool, use a sp or film, sorry, you get 38 or 39. And one man told me that, you know, using a film camera will f get you thinking about your, about your composition and not trying to just run through some shots and like, um, you know, try things. Um, it's two ways, of course. With a digital camera, it gives you a lot of time to experiment. But with a film camera, you've only got 38, 39 in a uh, film. And you're actually setting up every picture and making sure you've got everything right in regards to all the manual settings. If you're using manual, which normally you would do if you're using um, a film camera, and you've got to make sure your all your settings are correct, your f-stops, etc. And that's it takes a it takes a lot to learn uh, that different type of routine in photography. And is uh, you know you can remember when we first picked up a DLSR camera and moved from automatic uh, or you know shutter uh, priority to using manual. You can imagine what you're when you're using a phone camera, and especially a lot of phone cameras or lenses you get are fixed lenses. Well, not fixed lenses, but the interchangeable lenses. But you do get like the ones that are pretty much prime lenses with them. So you're using your legs quite a lot. So there's a lot of things you've got to take in consideration when you're using film, although it does give you a, a better way to train your eye um, uh, to use, uh, you know, so you're using your brain a little bit more and think more about the shot as opposed to experimentation, which is also good, of course, because we all like to experiment when we take pictures. Stephen, what about yourself? Are you, would you actually pick up a camera using your macro? Because that's, I don't know, yeah. I, I just don't see a macro photographer using a, a film camera. Here's the thing. Yes, I would because this this all that I do. So I do very little editing on my photos. So I like to see the grain. If if because the I noise. use a <laughs> the yeah. noise in the image. Yep. Yeah, but I, I like to see that because to me it shows you that you've used the photograph. You're you're going to your capabilities and 
you know, if you're if you're not denoising it, what annoys me these days, I love seeing the guys' photos where they've done like a 30, 60, 100 stack. Mm. But then I'm sticking in my head going, how can they do that? Because they're using AI software to blend these photos together. This is something they could do. You mean do de uh, denoising it in that case or photo stacking? Denoising it, but also doing their stacks to denoise yeah. it even more. And I just see that you know, likening to the models way back in the 80s and that when they used to airbrush them and take other imperfections out. And it's like them, their imperfections are for the, the person. So myself, I think, yeah, I could probably do it, but I don't know, sure, I, I'm not sure I've actually got the intelligence to actually do the dark room bit. Yeah. I would probably yeah. burn my fingers with chemicals and that or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think I could use it in my photography because I don't do a lot of editing. And okay. composition for me is more in my macro photography than anything. Yeah, oh, good point. I like that, actually, because uh, well, you've mentioned, of course, you're, you're brave enough to actually go out and do less processing. I think a lot of us photographers will get what you're doing it. And I'm the kind of person is like, if you're not putting something into an image, that's fine. If you're taking away from an image, like a distraction, like a, mm -hmm. for example, if there's a twig coming in the frame, if I patrol the frame of the, the actual, um, the frame of, I'm looking at the, the picture I'm taking, sorry. And if I see any distractions coming in, then I'll use, um, you know, a cloning tool to take that out. <clears throat> Although saying that, um, you know, the whole concept of photography is getting it right first time to get the perfect picture. Uh, but we all do get these small distractions. And I think, as modern photographers, we're we're kind of spoiled. We've got all these tools. We can, you know, clone something out, or we can actually just uh, use a, a, a radio uh, graduate filter. Uh, not so much as a filter, more of the actual grads that you pull down in Lightroom or even Photoshop, where you can actually darken the sky and bring the make the clouds pop a little bit. Um, using a film camera back in the day and going back to maybe the eighties or nineties, etc. Um, these luxuries weren't there, and of course. The only thing you had to edit was using the, the acid where you're actually putting the, the pictures in to control the light. Uh, it was all about light more, I think, back then. And I think, depending on the spool you get, you know, you can get like, um, you can get, a, 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 you know, a monochrome kind of look to your images. You can buy that type of uh, um, film. Uh, you could get uh, a more of a, I don't know if it's a long exposure. I'm not sure. And, and, Someone can correct me with that down below, but I'm sure there's some type of uh, film you could get pretty much in recent times in the 90s and thousands, where you can pop a, a spool that, that delays the shutter. Um, so if you're taking pictures of water, exactly, and try to get like a nice kind of silky movement in the water, then as we all know, you can do that spool as opposed to using a filter, like a, an ND grad or whatever. But yeah, I mean, there is a lot of good things you can do with uh, using a film camera. And I think, Myself, would I get one? Yeah, I've got three already, um, but I don't actually, I've not bought any spools for them or anything. Um, I wouldn't, I don't know if I could try to uh, do the, you know, the chemical side and develop them. I, my, my father was a, a film shooter and I used to watch him doing it all, but I never, I never took it in. I was only about eight year old at the time, so that's a lot, I suppose. But yeah, um, that's quite a good topic. and. I was going to bring something up to you guys. So you guys got anything that you want to bring into yeah. the mix, for example? I was about to say that I don't think, when I think about like Dorothy Lang or some, you know, some photographers, and even in the 19, you know, early 19th century, when they had the first film cameras. Yeah, um, yeah. It wasn't that important. I mean, some of the most amazing photos I remember show, been showing in my photography course was photos that were slightly blurred or soft focus. And even though they weren't technically amazing, they were still very good, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what makes it interesting with film. It doesn't have to be technically good, Yeah. you know? Yeah, that's a good and point. And I think we tend to often make the mistake that it has to be, but it doesn't. Mm. And yeah. another thing, the other thing, I remember as a child, when, cause I remember having a film, a small film camera, but just a normal shoot one, was taking, at the age of like, I think I must have been about 10, taking photos of the snow, just flowing down and it reminded me of one photo i remember seeing by a guy a gentleman i i love his face was lawrence winram i think he's edinburgh brace and i think he uses an old film camera yeah. he took a picture of edinburgh in the snow and it just looked amazing and it 
had of the sort of um, the snow, you could see the blurness of the snow coming through. Yeah, I like that. And like, I like the, so the something I was always wanted to try doing photography. I always wanted to try um, taking photographs and just mainly in monochrome and mainly just like um, fashion, like retro fashion, um, trying to recreate, you know, a scene from the 60s, that kind of thing, or even take pictures of bands and, you know, kind of just be a fly in the wall and just sit there and take pictures of interesting parts of their kind of, maybe the way they're sitting, maybe they're holding a guitar, etc. Uh, I like to, I like the f film photography from the 1960s. Um, I think we all do, I think, at some point, we, it, there's something about it, it's not so much as the nostalgia part, it's mainly about the style of it, uh, and I think we, um, when we look at like images from bands like the Beatles and, you know, for example, not so much the Beatles so much, just mainly in general um, 60s music. And there seems to be a real kind of hidden trendiness there. There seems to be something there that looks quite cool and hip. And, you know, I would love to be, be back in that time taking pictures of guys like Jimi Hendrix and, you know, it'd be really cool. And just trying to get like just a, um, a picture of what's going on and so it's social history taking pictures of people in the street in the sixties because it was so the streets were so clean and the people looked so interesting to look at and they had some great fashion. Um, but yeah, that, I've always wanted to do something like that, you know, something that's retro. Maybe that's what I, I like film photography. I like that retro kind of thing. But yeah, um, but there was also a lot of social issues in those times as well because well, yeah, of course, so that's there's always there always are social issues in every generation. Like Dorothy Land had shown a lot of uh, issues in that time with children having to work yeah because you know, of poverty and you know racial issues and etc there's a lot oh of yeah, yeah of course that's something that's you know you know something that we wish we can change past we would, we would change that stro uh, straight away of course in a time machine but it's more of to do with the fashion for me and the um the music everything about the 60s and it just looked quite cool do you um, have the idea stock was it would is it stock Woodhouse or Woodhouse stock? Sorry? Do you like the idea of those ma major hippie concerts that they had in? Yeah, yeah, I do. I like that. Yeah, that's quite good. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's like, I think we all have kind of some kind of photography we want to try, but we feel we can't get close to it. So that's a question, of course. And is there something like, you know, any of you guys sitting here tonight and you feel like you would just like to get maybe one day to do this type of photography? Is there anything that you love to take pictures of? And I'm not just talking about point and shoot. I'm talking about, you know, living that time and moment and trying to get some for it, from it, sorry. I'd like to take a quick trip somewhere like India in a train and yeah. take photos from a journey in a train or even somewhere like Nepal. That's something doable, of course, but it's just the logistics, of course, and that's all it is. Uh, yeah, of course, that's something you can do. And that's, um, you know, well, I can't, can't go back in the past, but, you know, there's when, t when you're taking pictures of... Um, the 60s, etc. I'm thinking more about, you know, uh, reenactment kind of thing or that kind of thing. But yeah, you guys, is there anything that you feel that you want to get a crack off taking a picture off? Um, you know, it could be anywhere, any country in the world or any type of uh, genre. Um, I, I was lucky enough to go to Tokyo when I was a bit younger. Oh, brilliant. And but this was before I had cameras or even thought about photography. And now I kick myself because I'm like, if only I had a camera to try and like remember some of the streets and the busyness and everything that was going on. Yeah. So I'd love to go back and almost make up for that regret and just spend some time in in, um, in Tokyo with, with my camera and yeah. try and find new ways to capture it that, are, are different and um yeah just capture the busyness and, and the um yeah what i've yeah. got in my head there, didn't you paul you can what i've got in my head when Callum said i'm i'm sitting here going do it do it do it do it do okay. it um yeah. stevie's going to get you a couple of tickets yeah it'd be great <laughs> <laughs> my, daughter, um, my daughter actually my, my daughter and my son-in-law are actually thinking about going to japan next year nice Nice. Uh, I hope I'm going to next year, hopefully, as well. Beautiful places to go I to. I think for street photographers, it's great. You know, you know where I would actually like to go is China and Hong Kong. Why? The the, the food photography over there is sublime. There's a, a, a friend of, 
that that I used to work with, Wilson Cheng, and he's over there. And the the photos he sends me is just like I'm drooling at my mouth, uh, drooling my mouth because you can, his photos are absolutely that good. So that uh, food photography, you mean? You said, yeah. Food photography and street photography, he does. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He does such a good job here, Wilson Cheng. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also, I think for me as well, is one thing I, I do regret because I wasn't into photography then. I was actually was at my dad's farm in, in Chile, in the south of Chile, and actually oh, yeah. watching the volcano explode. I mean, um, yeah, that was an that amazing was picture. Seen that. that was incredible to see. And because I already had a mobile, but the photos went back. Can you that send way. me that picture, Glads? Yeah, so it wasn't that great, it. but but I wish I wished uh, <laughs> I wasn't a photographer because I think. The photos would have been, you know, that I'd have got a lot better photos and even seeing the lightning coming out of it. What it looks like incredible. to me when you look at that picture, it looks like a, a mushroom cloud from a nuclear bomb. I know, but what was amazing was afterwards, you see this whole sky went red, literally. Really? Wow. Yeah, it was incredible. The yeah. And then the experience of the lightning afterwards at night, to I me, mean, it was scary, but. I've never seen light, lightning travel so fast because yeah. volcanic light is totally different. I was going to ask Alan, with digital photography now, we spoke about film, uh, is there a favourite look that you use on your camera? Um, I don't really use um, lots at all, to be honest. I try and do all the, the um, post-processing myself. Um, I've saved a few presets as like just base layers that I like and then... Um, if there's a similar shot to what that base layer is, then I'll I'll use that as a starting off point, um, and then sort of take the editing from there. Um, but I really don't use any presets or LUTs or anything when I'm sort of taking the images. Mm. Did you post everything in Photoshop and Lightroom? Um, so majority of it's in Lightroom. Um, I actually went through a little bit of a phase of bringing it into Photoshop and doing some like um like removing things I didn't like and fixing the, but I stopped doing that because I felt it took away from the image. I, I liked some of the mistakes or the, I mean, we've mentioned it before in terms of like trying not to make the perfect image. Um, but yeah, some of the, you know, if there's a, if there's a foot in the shot from someone else or a hand coming in that, you know, I, I, I used to think I need to take that out. And now actually it's just part of, it's part of the shot. I'm shooting in a living environment and there's things moving everywhere. So, Having that in the photo actually helps tell the story a little bit more, I think. Yeah. That's good. That's Actually, that's what I was talking about earlier on, about having something in your frame when you're patrolling your sides of your image and try to minimise any distractions. But I think it's different with, um, it's different with uh, you know, a street photography where you're capturing an environment and you're just trying to capture everything around you. So, yeah, because like in a landscape point of view, you're, you're trying to get that not perfect picture, but you know what I mean. You're trying to make it look ethereal, try to capture the emotion of the picture, uh, so you don't want anything that's drag dragging the eye out the picture as a way. Uh, so yeah, it's quite an interesting point there because street photography is supposed to look raw. It's supposed to look that way, isn't it? I think so. And um, I'm I, again. I think I've mentioned it previously, but I think there's a real danger on like social media and seeing people post these these images and, and sort of they're quite adamant that it's the right way to take a photo and I think with I think with all photography there's no right or wrong way I think it's you you develop your own eye and I think I'm really coming to terms with that myself and just yeah the imperfections the mistakes the happy accidents they're all part of just going out and, and, and shooting and almost embracing it a little bit yeah it's a learning yeah. process as well isn't it I mean yeah I agree with you on this, Callum, that there isn't a right or wrong way. And um, and I think people should just shoot what they feel is right, really, for them. And, and part of the process is making mistakes. I mean, to, to say you don't make mistakes in any way would be wrong, I think. We, <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and the reality is we all, we, all of us at one point will make well, great photos that aren't that great either. I mean, some days you'll have good photos, other days you won't, mm -hmm. you know? And we'll always be critical of our own work. Yeah. What I was saying to Paul the other day was how can you learn if you don't have a starting point? 
So, you know, I've got all the, I've got all my photos on Instagram which when I started and I've not took them down because at the end of the day, I like to see where I started and where I've came better and better, better and better because if you didn't have anything and believe yeah. me every day. That's, that's a good point. Thing. I do get what you're, you're all saying and, and I think um, there is that type of person who's, if someone's, let's say hypothetically, we, you know, if you're doing it full time, and you're trying to sell your brand of photography, then any sort of deficiencies or anything you'd want to remove, and that's that's because you're, you're selling yourself. Um, but I get what you're saying, Steve. It's that point where you want to see your growth. You want to see that because it's um, it's fulfilling. It's fulfilling mm -hmm. as you as a photographer, and it's a reference point. And it's also you learn as well, and it's how much you've learned through these stages of your your uh, period of doing photography. Um, Glad do you uh, do you echo that is what Stephen said? Do you do you agree with yeah, that? Stephen? I, I totally agree with Stephen on that. And I remember going to a, um watch Martin Parr interview um ages ago in the book mm. festival in Edinburgh, and he says that he takes loads <laughs> I love the fact that he said that he takes loads of not very good photos. And yet he's one of you know, he's a high caliber photographer, very high caliber, extremely good, but yet the fact he, you know, he's open with the fact, the idea that he doesn't always take amazing photos. And I love that because I think to say that you have to have a certain style, it has to be done a certain way, yeah. Um, yeah. for me seems so wrong because it puts, it puts, you know, people who are starting out really off photography. Yeah. And plus the fact it should be about expressing yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah, there is that thing. It's, as I think I mentioned it before, but social media, uh, we never had that when, when photography was pretty much when, when photography was um, a, a job or a full time job, whatever you want to put it. When you, people made money from it, um, you know, you never had anything from social media. You don't have any the no. the bitch and the whatever the, the critiquing is good. I mean, it's good to critique people's and like vice versa. And that's constructive, but there is a point. There's a that sound bite where there's someone coming in and putting a one-way comment in and saying something like shite photo <laughs> i believe it or not that's happened i've seen, I've seen a guy I don't know that happened to me. yeah it happened to me yeah it's uh i was actually this is way back i took a picture it was a shit photo actually uh <laughs> i took a picture of saint Giles cathedral in the rain and i tried to capture it um long exposure uh but i wanted to capture the the wet cobbles the problem was uh i put it I think it was something like um, uh, the hip stop. I had to, I had to actually set in manual, and at that time I wasn't using it uh, manual at the time. So I, you know, I was like a fish out of water. You know what it's like, and I was I wasn't thinking about my shutter speed. I wasn't thinking about um, well the f stop. I did. I put it up to about f twenty two, but I'd, I'd, <laughs> supposed to be about thirty seconds or above thirty seconds to get that picture. But no, it, <laughs> it came out kind of, it went okay, but what I've done is I put in black and white, as a lot of people used to do when they made a mistake. They they tried to put in black and white just to help cover up, to make it look kind of interesting, let's say. So anyway, lo and behold, I stuck the picture up and I thought, this is about 12 years ago or 15 years ago. And uh, what is one guy, out of nowhere, uppercase, shite, photo. And I, I was like, oh, great. <laughs> I had that. I had right. someone put that on my um, mirror photo, believe it or not, on, on the British Photography Award. Some oh. gentleman, I think yeah. he's a, I think he's a, um, a photojournalist, and he put shite photo, and I just oh thought it was hilarious. Yeah. It just made me laugh because I just started thinking, we all it, like all intelligence. I mean, very nice to have your own opinion. You know, I thought it's fine. That's your opinion. I respect that, but I'm not yeah, going to but... worry about. I don't know if you can say something intelligent, something constructive, shite photo. No, there was nothing constructive on it. Yeah. And, and I think that's I think I think that's sad because it puts it puts people off, you know. Photography is not for a certain group of people, it's for everyone. Yeah. You know? I, it, was, it was funny because you know, it was at a time when you know when you get that point when you start learning photography when you first started out all these years ago, whatever. And then you get a couple of good images and you're like feeling good and you thought, yeah, hey, I'll stick this image up. And then you go and make yourself a cup of coffee and you come back and then you scroll down and you've got one guy you've never seen before on your page and saying, shite photo. It's, <laughs> it's, I was like, what? You just have to laugh it off because, you know, in the end of the day, yeah. you know, every, 
everyone has it has a right to their own opinion. But at the end of the day, you know, you're not there to get validated by other people. And if, if that's how they feel, that's fine. But if they can't be constructive, then yeah. that's their problem. It's not your problem. It, it's yeah. different if someone says constructively, oh, that's a good photo, Harry. You could have done, you know, got a bit more closer or something. But yeah. to actually just write that just shows lack of respect. Lack of, yeah, uh, lack of respect, lack of intelligence. Um, so, guys, we're almost at the end now. Um, what I'll say, of course, just to add to that, I've not had any comments like that for 11 years, so touch wood, I hope it remains that way. Um, and I'm sure you guys are, are pretty much the same. You you guys, are your images are all good. Uh, it's been great seeing Callum tonight, and thanks, Callum, for coming on. Thank you, Callum, Callum, I really appreciate it. Would you like to come back found. on the, again, click casting? Yeah, 100%. Thanks for having me. I've really enjoyed just... Uh, being able to chat about, uh, get me thinking about my own process, never mind chatting about it. So, you know, I really appreciate right. it. Thank you. So thank you for coming, Callum. It's really nice. And thanks to these guys as well, because they had that, you know, if I was stuck here myself, I'd probably be getting these bits of paper here and asking questions. Well, you can't see it because it's white. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, guys, well, thank you question? for saving me again. Yeah. Can I just say something? Can, Callum, what's that stage? Why do you have that stage behind you? Are you uh, so I'm, I'm in the university right now, so I've been doing some animation all day. Um, this was a nice oh. welcome break because um, you can end up talking to your puppets or talking to yourself. So talking to so what puppets people. have you got? I just want to. What puppets do you have? Can you show us your puppets? Um, yeah. Can I like to see? Yeah, good point. <laughs> so it's just a little. Oh um, man, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. Like wire and um ball and socket joints inside so they all move and then hold position so I can take the photo and then just keep moving it incremental each time until you play it back and it, and it starts moving. Do you make those puppets yourself? Uh, so the, the armature is a, a bought armature and then everything on top is made and then sculpted by myself. Everything behind me has all been made. That's um, amazing. So. That's mm -hmm. quite artistic in its own right, let alone the photography and the animation. No, but... Thank you very much. That's pretty cool. And so what stories do you create with those? Or what story um, did you create today with so your character? At the moment, it's an animated documentary about my PhD research. So I did a bunch of interviews over the last three years and then turning it into a, a, a documentary. You talked about projection before. I'm actually projecting imagery into the sets behind. So the puppets are interacting with projection as they start to move around. So... And what kind of um, what kind of interviews did you do? Um, I just did interviews with some animation studios and some educators in Scotland. Mm. Um, okay. just about just about their perception of animation in in Scotland. So, um, okay. there's a bit of a dry topic, but it, it's it was an interesting one. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I just wanted yeah. to know because I was curious. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm glad. Actually, I sure was going to mention something about you know the the backdrop where you're sitting there is is really you know intriguing seeing that. And thanks for explaining that as well. Um, yeah, guys, that's been good. And Callum, just to say, we'll we'll stick a link uh, across here uh, where to visit your insta your insta, and we'll also put a couple of links underneath the video. Uh, so if anyone wants to check out Callum's work, please do, guys. Um, have a look at his website as well. That's why I looked at a lot of his stuff there. The videos are great. So have a look at that, and you won't be disappointed. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll leave it there, guys. Uh, thanks again to everyone, Callum, mm -hmm. Stephen, and Glads. Been a pleasure, never a chore. Bye. Anyway, right. See you later, guys. Take care, and uh, have a nice evening. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. Mm -hmm.